two months after the incident that closed the La Salle Causeway, this was the situation as we approached June. There is movement around the structure, but little practical work is taking place. The bridge operators continue their duties, but there is little for them to do but maintain the grounds. Work on the gratings of the deck is at a standstill. But pay attention to that covered walkway on the south side. We'll see it again. There's little movement on the west end, but pieces of the bridge that were undergoing refurbishment remain on the ground. And what may be accommodation or office trailers are at the far end. As May draws to a close, there is activity involving the removal of the floating platforms beneath the bridge. But all other work has ceased as decisions are taken on the future of the bridge. One constant presence throughout this period is the enormous supporting platform under the counterweight. This pass over the deck shows just how close we were to completing the new grating. As we enter June, after several days of steady work, the floating platforms have almost disappeared and preparations to remove the West End trailers are in hand. Whilst a bridge operator trims the grass margins, workers from Landform Civil are clearing up and departing. It's also time for the large floating tubes that supported the working platforms to depart the site. It's worth noting that since May 15th, pedestrians and cyclists have been able to use the crossing. Further evidence of a change in approach can be seen when the barrier below the bridge is removed. Just one day after an announcement that a demolition contract has been awarded to Priestley Demolition, representatives are seen on site. Within days, while some equipment remains from the old bridge work, equipments begin to arrive. A barge can be seen, perhaps removing anchor blocks from the site of the previous barrier. On the bridge proper, there is immediately no evidence of work, providing an opportunity for a little longer to enjoy the historic site with which we're all so familiar. The situation changes significantly on the 10th.
the arrival of a large mobile crane on the west end signals progress. Ancillary items like these large rubber mats also appear. One of the first things to unload is a large container. A large quantity of protective fencing follows it to the ground. Over the lunch period, the crane moves to a position on the east end. We will see it employed before long. Work is observed around the operating arm on the north side. And welding sets are seen in position for work. And observed at work very shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, on the east end, a smaller mobile crane unloads substantial crane mats. That same day, the larger crane can be seen operating on the south side, whilst the smaller one appears to be bracing the damaged beam. It can be seen that efforts are focused on removing the temporary walkway on the south side. Work continues into the evening when the crane is at rest. Lighting sets are in place and on, but the only work appears to be around the machinery room on mid-level, which is being cleared. Note in this scene the steel bracing that has been added to the buckled beam. This panning shot across the bridge shows little activity midweek. Sand piles on both the east and west ends, as well as the rubber mats, suggest that they will be used to protect the roadway. Note too that enormous shearing claw awaiting employment. On the east end, reinforcement of the buckled beam appears to be enjoying continued attention. Plate reinforcements have been added steadily along its length on both sides. There's a dramatic change of pace when a large caterpillar excavator from PDI arrives.
It is not long in setting up on the east end, and you can't help but wonder, is it destined to use the shear? The answer, as it always tends to be in circumstances like these, is that time will tell. If you find these updates interesting, and you want to continue to see them, please consider subscribing and follow the Aerosnapper channel. Thanks for watching.